on Southern Word. Gazing down every inch of his irises, counting each individual lash of his outer eyelids, yet it's as if we never knew each other. His hardened jaw worn down by the trials of life, gray hairs in various places occupy what's left of his beard. I sink back to my memories. My father, every day at the crack of dawn, would sneak into my room and hug me. His voice, leaving my ears, being replaced by the sounds of birds, pure curiously chirping each morning, my father told me he loved me. And throughout that morning, way into the afternoon, I found myself staring at a golden clock, not knowing how to read the Roman numerals being depicted by this same golden clock hanging in the doorway. It's bronze hands moving slowly, taunting me silently. Seeing the window, I would grab my little stepladder, and every few hours I look out to see if my pops was coming. Watching TV, bored from the rehashes, replays, and cliches, I would fade away from consciousness. The noises of the TV would not bother me. The overwhelming boredom put me to sleep, but I was still listening. The ring of the phone penetrated the inner linings of my eardrums. His voice is what I was hearing, and I would hurl my body swiftly through glass and doors, dodging nails in the floors just to snatch the phone away from my mother, use my hands and my feet to shoo away my sister and my brother. I had to be the first to tell my pops that I love him, sitting on my mother's lap while she sung my father's song, not knowing this would be my dad's way of life and mine, I sung along. I dig my hole and you build a wall. I dig my hole and you build a wall. And somehow it would always go back to him. My father always told me as a child that to protect what you love, you build a wall. You build a wall, you build it tall, and you build it strong. And though from the beginning it seemed like he gave me his love and affection, my father's perception of an emotional investment needed to be corrected. Construction consumes the detention. Late afternoons, my father would trade shifts, my mother, supposedly watching me, my sister, my brother. He never noticed this, but every night I spent hungry. Not that my old man didn't nourish me properly, I just really craved some time with my dad. Ears adhered to the sounds of drills and hammers running over each other, the noise, the sound replaced my father's voice in my head. I remember mind idle, staring at the tile, awaiting my father. He would walk in at midnight. The bags under his eyes grew darker. Sawdust and bits of wood chips were gathered in his beard. Every single ever-living inch of his orifice reeked of asphalt and rubber, but he was my dad, my father. So I'd hug him. And I remember as I grew older, I put my foot down, set my voice tucked forward, telling him he spent years building up on these walls, cradling each brick as if he were the father, replacing emotions for mortar. Brick after boring brick, he spent years trying to build this wall around me. Swearing to God that nails and two by fours can raise his son. And even now, as I've grown older, I try to unearth the mysteries of why my father didn't really love me. Obviously, as you can see, it left a hole in me. Just a hole, a crack, a crevice, where a father's love should be. For dinner, I ate bullets. So tonight, no more of my brothers will die a dysfunctional family. That causes dysfunction. Last night, another one of my brothers died. We used to play football in backyards without the interruption of sobbing echoes. 25, 25 to life dreams. dreams. 21's a life dream. He died at the age of 19. We used to glance out the glass-stained windows. Where you saw the stampede of shadows. Circled the block to keep us from creeping out the back door. From spying on neighborhood dope boys, we used to sit up on the gate and watch honeydew droplets condense on the lawn's new haircut, childhood innocence was an orchestra of dreams. My brother and I conducted them. But never knew the growing out of Spider-Man socks would be this complicated. Your planet fell from the sun's orbit at age 13. You didn't want to listen to your parents tell you to eat your vegetables. Cause, Cause we, we wanted, wanted to, to lie under graffiti skies. skies. Five years ago he taught me how to throw a pass long enough to hang with the boys. Like the oldest sibling I wanted, I was the oldest of five, so I never had one to teach when mama couldn't. I never liked to wear makeup. He never made me wear makeup while chasing sprinting feet on fields we ran side by side. He protected me till I was safe enough to reach the touchdown. I stopped running when mama received that call at 3 a.m. 
I never made it past the end zone. Because, because the, the monsters, monsters rule these streets. John, a smile never left your face. Indexes on blue triggers robbed that smile from your face. The moment I saw black tears, I knew I lost you. Tonight, I will eat bullets. No, no more gunpowder will be sweat from mother's bones. bones. No, no child will cry mercy for mothers with wine glasses full. Well, he was my brother, killed by our brothers. When, when will you stop, stop this family feud? In this family, we no longer celebrate birthdays. You celebrate death days. The monsters rule these streets. Goons and goblins try to scare you to sleep. Release fear from steel alerts. John wasn't scared. Where is my mama? That's all he wanted to know before the bullets stopped his speech. Tonight I will eat bullets. No more gunpowder will be swept from brother's bones. Cocoon mouths, he swallowed his death. I will swallow his death. Burn jaws, taste the metal on the body of my tongue. Let, Let the, the bullets, bullets travel past your esophagus. esophagus. Make, Make their beds, beds in, in your stomach. stomach. Sleep till, till they, they dissolve. dissolve. Die before they can kill. Don't sit in the fields and catch angel dust on skin. Or shrink down to the size of crow's ears when metamorphosis of your unheard gunshot words arise from fatal tongues. We you will shoot, shoot the sound of funeral church bells. Seek refuge in Wonderland. My brother found Wonderland. No more gunpowder will sweep the outline of your brother's bones. Tonight I will eat bullets. Tonight, Tonight no, no more, more of your brothers, brothers will die. die. I've always found my pride in fists that clench and punch through skies. Mama always said I was more Malcolm than Martin, more riots than peace rallies, but hey, by any means necessary, right? Right? By any means. Even if living out the dream means becoming a part of a nightmare. Even if seeing your people nowadays hurts your soul because they fell in love with the modern day slavery. We used to be royalty, but lost our crowns somewhere in the middle passage. And now, if we try to rediscover that through a hoodie, we may be murdered. Don't it sound like just another black poem? Just another blame it on the system, cry for help from the victim. But I never saw a problem with dressing like midnight or looking like midnight, the thin line between the worst of your yesterdays and the best of your tomorrows, 10 points ahead of the game, thanks to Bobby Seale, thanks to Huey P, we gonna get some tactics. Survival of the fittest. But what about those who weren't fit to survive in this madness, just scrapping up chains to buy dreams? We all just rebels with our GPS set to a cause, heartbeat of a ghetto, drumming out stories of brothers who didn't grow up in my household. My mind is an alley that shelters my addiction of free speech. Don't it sound like just another black poem? Black poem, black poem, we under attack. Poem, and I'm not just talking about my race, because truthfully enough, we're all in danger Bred to pounce on people with weaknesses that differ from ours, we call humans aliens. Just because they speak how we don't understand whatever happened to the language of love. LGBTQ, a community of people so marginalized, I'm surprised they didn't specify whether it was college ruled. I just want to remind you that differently able doesn't mean not able at all. And if this still sounds like just another black poem, it's probably because the world is so dark. So let's rise. Like fists for human rights, let's rise. Like conversations in a room full of people willing to stretch their comfort zones. If you are human, we must rise. Sam, Amanda, Alexa, Sean, come back out.